<clears throat> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a new lecture within our Jean Monnet Open Online course of European Integration. As you know, this course is part of a Jean Monnet Chair at the Alexandru Yankuza University of Yash, and it is co-funded by the European Union through the Erasmus Plus program, the European Union's education youth and sports program we always say this at the beginning of each video for two reasons first for the sake of acknowledgement of gratitude but second and very important for the sake of transparency in order to avoid any conflict of interest it's important for you to know who pays for our videos today it's a very important day it's a very important topic Today we will discuss about propaganda, but it's also a very important day because we have a very important guest today. And uh, today we have with us uh, Tatiana Havlin, Tania Havlin, who is of the University of Siegen in Germany. And she is a long time uh, uh, how, how to say, member of the Eurosci family even before Eurosci was born, because she participated in all the projects that gave birth to Eurosci later. So she she was uh, at the University of A Coruña in Spain several times. She participated in new projects in the development of new summer schools from the very beginning when they were just pilot projects and until they grew so much that they had more than 500 students and uh, she also participated in the activities of the international expansion in in romania she came to the university of yash several times she was also at the university of suchava and um, she's a long time uh, how do you say uh, collaborator uh, co um, partner of the eurosci network as i said even before it was formally born and she's also very important because she's from ukraine and she's from ukraine and she's an example of a successful Ukrainian person who has managed to um, do a PhD in Ukraine and later has um, had success uh, in, in, in getting uh, a job in, in a German university. And she also works even at American universities in, in germany so she's a very successful person but who comes from ukraine and also i like her very much because she comes from ukraine but um, uh, she's a quite a balanced person she's not like um, a ukrainian nationalist or uh, uh, pro pro Russian freak or anything. She's a very balanced uh, person, and uh, she did her studies at the University of Odessa. And I think we may have uh, several people watching from Odessa, but they are watching on YouTube be because it's easier for them with the, their technical connection. Uh, they watch on YouTube. And we also have students at the University of Chernivtsi in Valentina's, in Valentina's group. Chernivtsi is on the more western <coughs> part of uh, Ukraine. And I like also, when I read the Tanya Havlin's CV, I like that she did like her PhD in Kharkiv, or something like that, appeared in, in her PhD. So I think she's a real Ukrainian person, a person who has been everywhere in Ukraine. And also because Ukraine now, it's not 
just limited to the Ukrainian border. She's a real Ukrainian now in Germany too. So <clears throat> I have to thank you very much, Tanya, for, for taking part today in this special lecture debate. It's like a round uh, table discussion <coughs> in which we will discuss about uh, propaganda. Um, and you know, propaganda is very important nowadays, and sometimes this word that originally comes from the Catholic Church, from a congregation of the Catholic Church for the propagation of faith. And uh, this expression of, of propaganda nowadays, it seems that it's limited to certain countries. So when, they, when, when countries do propaganda, they say it's the Russians who do propaganda, and what we do is not propaganda. What we do is strategic communications for countering propaganda. So what we do is just to try to, because propaganda has a bad name nowadays, but in fact, it's essentially the same thing. Since the Catholic Church, until nowadays, propaganda is a way how um, leaders, important leaders, try to promote their interests by communication, um, information campaigns to try to influence public opinion. And this started with the Catholic Church, but at the, the time when it started, the Catholic Church was also a very important international player in international politics. And it's also had policies for international expansion. Nowadays, we have other so-called great powers. We have the United States, we have Russia, we have China, we have um, Germany, we have um, different uh, powers that engage in propaganda campaigns. If you do not like this word, you can use uh, another word but i will use propaganda because it's easier for us and because like that i can say it in russian propaganda in ukrainian propaganda in spanish propaganda and uh, in romania propaganda it's the same thing so it's a word that for us it's an, an, an easy one good so without further ado um tanya Please unmute your microphone because we have to start uh, talking to you. Okay. So, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, доброго дня, uh, шановні студенти. Я рада бути присутньою на цьому зібранні. І я бачила попередні зібрання, які були не менш провокуючі, не менш цікавіші і не менш uh, Actualным темам. I was present to other meetings of yours, and they were not uh, less um, up to date, and they were not less provocative. So I'm happy to be now with you to share this uh, discussion, mm -hmm. and of course, sitting comfortably at home. So thank you also to you, Diego, to be in part of it. This is a new technology that we use. We do it at home, but we were discussing before we went public. We said that when we do it this from home. It sometimes the message that we transmit is more powerful. We were discussing about Bolsonaro in Brazil. Mm. <clears throat> he he won the, the elections there with a difference of 10 million votes or more. I don't know. It was something, uh, a, a landslide victory he had in a country where uh, 100 million people voted. So it was, and and he, we were mentioning that he was at home doing campaign from home. So this is our target now, at least presidential seat. <laughs> our target now is propaganda. Right? Okay, I have a question for you then. Can I ask you this question? Yes. Are we a part of propaganda? We are part of propaganda. Our main sponsor, we mentioned it in the beginning of each lecture. Right? 
because we are not deceiving propaganda we do not uh, use trolls or hackers or anything we are open and we start each lecture by saying who pays for us right just like the germans right when they go to ukraine and they offer training courses for ukrainian people and they have a very nice shield with uh, an eagle or something a bird they're like for the foreign uh, foreign office of the german yes because you know the germans also do propaganda in ukraine you're now in germany and you forget no i don't forget about that um, i think they call it public relations right? uh, public relations or diplomatic relations so yes yes so let's let's start with this like uh, with the name of propaganda how many different names do we know for propaganda so you you mentioned public uh, relations i say yeah. also strategic communication i have another name for you um, i was thinking about this subject over the weekend and i talked to colleagues and friends and the most recent term the up-to-date term for propaganda i think this fake news yes they they, they accuse each other of uh, fake news all the time and they but they use also diplomacy sometimes they call it um uh, public diplomacy it's diplomacy with public opinion right uh, sometimes if the conflict goes too far away they call it information uh, wars so information wars yes they they they, they call also this expression hybrid war yes yes and they say yeah. that uh, yes and i also like it that sometimes they call it education they call it civic education mm. sometimes so for instance when the americans pay the students in chernivtsi to they they pay their ngos right to with money from U, usaid for from the development uh, funds for international development of the us to do propaganda in ukraine and they call it civic education campaigns so, so there are many, many different names, but we should ask the people in Ukraine what names they know for propaganda. I don't know if we, our connection will work, but we, we ask them. Valentina, Valentina's group, please, could you, some, some of you, just unmute your phone. <coughs> Hi, Bogdan. So you, you are Bogdan Stanko, right? Yeah. No. No? What's your name? Yeah, Bogdan Stanko, yes. Bogdan Stanko, I just tell you your name so that you know that Securitatia works. And we know the names of all of you. Right? <laughs> we are recorded. <laughs> But, but we, no, we are just joking, Bogdan. We have a question for you and for the group in Chernivtsi. If you, if you can think of some additional name for propaganda, because sometimes there are many different names. We mentioned uh, in, information campaign, civic education, uh, strategic communications do you know some other names that someone sometimes foreign governments use to 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 describe their propaganda activities some other name for propaganda yes if, if you know some other names for propaganda like i don't know one of the propaganda options is a tv like uh, yes like I understand. Mm -hmm. So how do you say propaganda in Ukrainian? Oh. Is it propaganda? Yes. So, propaganda. Propaganda sounds in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
What's the difference between propaganda and reclama? <laughs> so, reclama is uh, uh, how to explain it. It's a propaganda of goods. Yeah, yeah, it's a propaganda of goods. Like uh, propaganda, propaganda, it's something like uh, it's like a propaganda for for some use. Mm -hmm. for some community some yeah for some ideas for the community okay today the connection is working very well so congratulations to valentina bohatirets because she managed to improve her connection very much and this will be very important also for our future projects in ukraine thank you i put you in mute can you um, can we ask another question uh, of our students? Yes, what would you like to ask? I want to ask uh, not how propaganda sounds in Ukrainian, but when they hear the word propaganda, or what kind of propaganda they think. Ah, that's very good. That's very good. So Bogdan, again, please uh, unmute your phone. Because Tanya has a question for, for you. Can you repeat the question? Please. Please. So my question was, when you hear the word propaganda, what images do you have in mind? Uh, now you can ask the question in Ukrainian, because it's better. Коли ви чуєте слово пропаганда, про яку пропаганду ви думаєте? Якого типу пропаганда? Звідки вона? Пропаганда, як... Propaganda has a, a lot of face in different options. I don't know exactly. Yes, but the, the, the question, I think I understood your question, Tanya. Let's uh, continue because I think it's a very important topic. We can ask also in, in, in Romania, for instance, Gabriela. Gabriel. Uh, when, when I think of propaganda, the first thing I think is a negative uh, thing. Yes, and, and you when so you when you hear propaganda, it's something negative, right? But of what, course, what, what, what like image that. comes to your mind? Does it like a, a specific person or a specific flag or a specific uh, topic or what? When you hear this word propaganda, what comes to your mind? Uh, the people in the power try to manipulate uh, the others to think a certain way. Yes, but when you think uh, the people in power, in your mind, you must see the face of someone or people in power. You think about maybe you think about a businessman or you think about the leader of some country or you think about the president of your country who comes to your mind what do you see when you think about propaganda oh i don't see necessarily a face i don't think as at a specific specific person but so in general people that are trying the news also uh, um, many times they make propaganda mm -hmm. yes the news well but the news is like um, a vehicle for propaganda right yes. but who who writes the news or for whom do they work those who write the news that's also a question right but talking about news, we have a new connection now. Vasya. Hi, Vasya. Are you there? Vasya doesn't have a good connection. The same problem he has had many times in the past. I think it's better that he watches on YouTube because the I think the strength of the internet connection is not sufficient for Hangouts. It's not like in Romania, uh, Claudio. 
because Romania is the country in the world with the best internet connection, right? That's true. But uh, regarding propaganda and the synonym of this word, we we can mention something like a manipulation of also mm -hmm. advertising if you if you like to or uh, spread uh, ideas. But uh, when you yes yes yes, I like this idea of spread because um, in Jamonet in the Jamonet projects right. They tell you that you should do like scientific project, right? But then one of the criteria that give you points is what they call dissemination. And dissemination is important, right? For for Jean Monet too. And uh, in the part of dissemination is where our project received the greatest number of points. dissemination right so so but it's another word is um, other people could call it propaganda uh, when when people criticize the european union in the uk in the brexit uh, debates in the uk sometimes they say that uh, jean monet professors are pro propagandists of the eu right and they say that the Jamone um, projects are propaganda projects. What do you think? Is Jamone propaganda according to you? I don't know. We will see. But <laughs> uh, um, well, uh, when you talk about the propaganda, the first thing that I have in, in my mind is something like a strategic military. Um, ideas or um, actions and uh, in this uh, in this case i remember the the movie enemy at the gate and there is a lot of propaganda in that movie and uh, i like it very much the word of the nikita Khrushchev, who say says uh, uh we have caviar we have vodka but we don't have time so it was quite yes, I told you I like what you mentioned now about the uh, war right enemy yeah. at the gates and and sometimes that you, you you need propaganda also to to um, raise support for your war right for your cause and um, I don't know if you remember do you know Parasyuk? yes yes the guy uh, who speak about uh, about the Maidan and uh, he faced the um, Klitschko, yes? You, you know, Parasyuk is, is from Lviv, I think, from that area, from the very western part of Ukraine. And he came to Euromaidan and after there was an agreement uh, signed by all the parties for organizing new elections in the country, and he said, no, 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 um, the dictator, the, the criminal, the criminal has yes. to go now. If he doesn't go, go before 10 a.m. tomorrow, we will go with uh, force and, and remove him from there, right? And he said that he was not in any party, he was not in any uh, movement, uh, that he just came to Kiev with his Sotnia, right? Do, yeah. do you remember, Tanya? Can you unmute your phone? Yes, I remember that. Do uh, you remember Parasyuk was a really great... Um, I think he 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 changed the the what what happened there in Euromaidan. He was really important there, and uh, he 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 said that he was not in politics. He was not into anything. And now my question for you, Tanya: How is it possible, right, that someone who is not a member of anything 
manages to go up on the stage there in Euromaidan, where you have on your side Klitschko, which is Merkel's man in Ukraine, and and you have the lead Yatsenyuk, the leaders there of Ukraine. How is it possible that a person that is not supported by any organization or anyone that he reaches the stage as, and he's giving a microphone and he's given the opportunity to talk to Euromaidan. How is that possible? Well, I'm not an expert on Parasuk. This is first and second. I think that um, since you said that he was supported by his Sotnia, at least, he had some support. So uh, he was not one man band, that's for sure. And mm -hmm. he's not now for, uh, for sure as well. Yeah, but a Sotnia, how many people are in a Sotnia? 100. Sotnia is 100 people. Ah, but the, point, the point is. I think that it was not the power of personality. I think it was the power of what he said. And what he said met, uh, got attention and it got um, reaction. That got a reaction in, uh, um, in, you know, at the Maidan. And it provoked a lot of emotions. And I think this is how it works. Mm -hmm. If you talk to hundreds, um, thousands of people in facts and numbers, it doesn't work. If you talk about agreements, which people do not believe anymore, it doesn't work. But if you start to be emotional, which happened at that moment, and I think it was the moment, and I don't remember any kind of moments which this young politician had afterwards. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, he was really important at that point. And um, I think he talked very well there. I think it, you know, when I heard him talking, I, I said, you know, this, this person is really good. It has to be someone selected by, by some very great power, right? By CIA or by something who trained him, who told him how, what to say, how to address the people, how to reach there. But it might have just been coincidence. So he might be just be a hero, right, himself. I guess we will now find out that. But now, I, what I, because uh, Claudio mentioned this enemy at the gates, I heard that Parasuk now is a very important symbol of, in Ukraine. It's a symbol for Ukrainian, uh, for the Ukrainian nation, right? In, in, in the in the war in the east against separatism and and he's now his profession now is military right but he mm, i heard that he doesn't fight because he's too important if he would die it would be a disaster right mm -hmm. so he's more like a what they call it a poster boy why, why, why don't you ask our students in Ukraine if uh, he is a symbolic um, icon for the Ukrainian youth? It would be interesting. Let's ask to... them. Bogdan, please. Our connection with Ukraine is not very good because they are sitting very far, like in a very important meeting, right? So, Bogdan. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know Volodymyr Parasyuk? Yeah, I know, but I can't tell for all Ukrainian. But it's for me, he was a symbol of Maidan and of Rob, but not now. It's for me too, now. he was a sim. He was like when I heard him. You know, my immediate uh, uh, reaction was to say, "Slava Ukraini." Yeah. Yes, but then when you analyze things more carefully, right? Then it's when you start having more questions, right? And you think, wow, it's a danger. Maybe you know we can be manipulated with this. But he's really good. I recognize. So, do, do, is he still famous now, Parasuk? Yeah, but. Not like a hero, he like a fighter. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he he does he do any like campaigns on on YouTube or something? Does he have a YouTube channel or a Facebook page or whatever? 
Is he still active? Yeah, and kind. I like Borisuki, especially now he, he keep in silent uh, a lot of months. I don't know. Uh-huh. I don't hear about Borisuk now. Mm -hmm. Especially cool. maybe maybe some months ago, yes, but not now. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Not before election. Mm -hmm. Ah, before the election is not good. Okay, good. Can can I say something? I think because you mentioned a very important word, and this is how um, if we talk about propaganda, it works. He was a symbol, and propaganda works with symbols and emotions, which back up some ideology. And if symbol is put to the very high standard, and as it happened in that the moment at Maidan, it's difficult to maintain the level of that um, moral position, the level of that energy which was at that moment. And what happened afterwards, it is different story. And um, what our students told us, or Bogdan said, it's not any more like that. So the momentum is gone, and now he has to come up, not only he, but come up with something which corresponds with the situation which is happening in Ukraine. And so you think that maybe Parasik was uh, very important at that particular moment, but now Parasik is not so important, maybe. No, you, you see, this is what you're doing, you personalize. You see, you uh, and what is it? An action which is important? An action to say we're gonna hit the existing uh, uh, authority, or it's important uh, personality. And we know that Ukrainian politics is very much personalized. Russian politics is very much per personalized, and this is the danger of politics. And this is how uh, propaganda works. It is focused on personalities. Mm -hmm. So you, you think uh, that uh, Parashuk uh, himself personally was not so important, it was his message that was important at that time, right? And yes, this is what... Parashuk, it could be someone else. Yeah, uh, this is my personal state, I, uh, stance. I don't want to personalize. I want to see the action which corresponds with the mood of the uh, gather, uh, people gathered there. So, but if you want to see a personality in that, you can also look at that from this point of view. And your obvious perspective is from the point of view of personality. So, so, so yes, because when I saw him, I, I thought he was important. It's even like when you see a film, right? And you know that the film, it has a script writer and it has a director and it has a producer and so on, but sometimes, you like the actor so much, right? That that you believe that he really contributes. That he is what, like you say, the Godfather, and you see okay, but and you say the actor really. I understand, but the question is: Did he have a leading role, or did he have an episode role? And I would say that was episode role, which may provoke a lot of consequences. The ideas, not him himself. Yes, that's. I, I think I, I can agree with that. So, so my, my question is also now for all of you. If you have heard about uh, Texas in Donbas, have you heard about uh, the Donbas, Texas? Have you heard about him, uh, Tatiana? No, I didn't. I, I didn't hear. If you search on, on YouTube, right, and you search uh, Texas, Donbas, it's uh, it's an American from Texas, right? That uh, went to Donbas to fight together with the separatists, right? And he makes uh, videos every day that he goes anywhere, and he posts them on YouTube, and he makes propaganda for the mm, Donbas uh, separatists, right? But he's American, and because he's American, he speaks. English very well to the American people, and he makes this propaganda to gather support from the American people, right? So it's international propaganda. So what we discuss now, the role of propaganda in international relations. But so he's not famous, right, uh, Texas? 
Well, I don't follow that. That's why, but I don't say he's not famous. I, I say it's just I I don't follow this information stream, and I think we can also apply that to this propaganda subject that there are different information streams, and we stream in particular information st streams, and this is another way to describe um, pro propaganda, if you want. Mm -hmm. So I'm not in this information stream. That's why. Mm -hmm. I also have another question for you because now you are our Ukrainian in Germany. <laughs> and I like. There are many Ukrainians in Germany, I'm not the only one. Discussing about Germany, right? Sorry? I like discussing about mm. Germany a lot because Germany is a great power, right? So Germany. Uh, it was already a great power, but after reunification, it became a really, really great power. It's the leader of the European Union. And um, my, my question is related to what Gabriela said, right? Gabriela Morosham, she's from Suchava. She's a very good student. And she mentioned that um, something about the news when when she hears the she hears the word propaganda she thinks about the news right my question is tanya if you know uh, news outlets right and uh, for instance people they say that sputnik the news agency the russian news agency sputnik mm. or mm, Rus mm, russia today Right, the, the channel, the TV channel, are um, very important uh, media outlets, right, for propaganda. Uh, and, I, and I think that Putin, for instance, does not hide that. They say we have Sputnik and we use it, right? But he just said he does not deny it is propaganda, he just says that the other um leaders the, of great powers they also have their own um, media uh, outlets for propaganda do, do you know if uh, in the german case what's the german equivalent to russia today well i don't uh, i don't see there is such equivalent of russia today because russia today in itself something very special but we have to look how the media are funded in in the post-soviet space and in uh, germany or in the western uh, europe mm -hmm. and i don't know if you know that uh, every citizen who live in germany contributes to a media source it's kind of informal tax which everybody is imposed to pay um, monthly uh, to the information channels which is made in a way to avoid the state influence or that state or authority of the state uses these media outlets as propaganda source. So people can, can, can choose when they write their tax uh, declarations, can you? No. No, this is not this is not on the tax declaration. Sorry for interrupting you. It is separated from tax because the state is collecting taxes and this is collected by another institution it is kind of informal tax but state uh, like german authorities they do not collect it for this information outlets they um it, the different authority collects it so the state doesn't have a hand in this uh, funding politicians have influence over this uh, recht, uh uh, uh, information outlets, but they do not have uh, influence. And for instance, in Russia or in Ukraine, medias are uh, funded. There are st state-funded medias. Are you still following me? And that's why state uh, state authorities have have so much influence over uh, information presentation, over news, and so on. And that's why there is a debate in Ukraine. But we can also ask our students about creation of a public uh, TV, mm -hmm. which is exist in Germany. And in Germany, the existence of, of this public TV happened after Second World War, 
after the Ministry for Propaganda and so on, you, you, because since we talk about propaganda, there was a Ministry for Propaganda at that time. And after uh, when um, when the war was over, they created this pu publicly funded uh, media outlets. Mm -hmm. Also, this uh, I, I sometimes on YouTube I, I I search for things for videos for our course, and I find something that it's called like something. Deutsche Welle, can it be? This is part of it, yes. This is part. Deutsche Welle, who pays for it? This public, uh, partially this publicly funded... Um, uh -huh. yes. And Deutsche Welle, I, I see the videos and they, they have the news uh, in German, but they also have the news in English and in Spanish and in other languages. So you think yes. that the... the the German people, they pay Deutsche Welle uh, because they like the, the Spanish people very much. They want to educate them. Well, um, I think Deutsche Welle uh, um, has, um, but I wouldn't need to check it, has uh, um, um, the mixed funding and part of this uh, uh, public funding goes to Deutsche Welle. Um, I'm, it is debatable how uh, German people um, relate to this informal tax for media. Some people like it and support it, some dislike. So I don't think you can get a clear answer if German people like to inform Spanish people in Spanish about something. So I don't think there is no clear answer to that. No, my, my question is that maybe it's like the German equivalent to uh, to Russia today in the sense that Russia today also has news in spanish news in english well if you want to compare it from the language politics maybe but we understand that the uh, the um, the impact which two different channels which you mentioned produce is totally different any hotel you go all over europe and you turn on the tv there is not a russia today but there is no um deutsche welle and i think it's uh, iconic already for mm -hmm. our subject, have you have you heard about uh, CG, uh, CGTN? Mm, no. You know what happened to me when there was this uh, summit in Brussels uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, or, or maybe it was when no, it was when the armistice. It was the celebration of the armistice of the First World War, right? And uh, I watch on YouTube, and I and I fought some live broadcast to show me what was happening there. The one that I found it was called CGTN, and I didn't know. It, and it, it was the China Global Television Network. Okay. And, and I was very thankful for the Chinese people to. Offer me the transmission of this event in France, I think it was, right? And uh, I, I, I think it may be something like equivalent to Russia today, right? But for China. Well, uh, was it in Chinese or in which language did you watch it? It was without commentary. It was just uh, uh, showing the images there. Uh, it's like a live webcam, you know, like mm, you know, I understand the leaders, how they meet and so on, but they didn't talk. Mm. And uh, but I, I think, yes, when you look online, it's like also Al Jazeera. Have you heard about Al Jazeera? Yes, of course. Yeah. They also transmit in English, right? Mm. Yeah, I think there are two of them uh, in English and in Arabic. Yes. By, by the way, speaking of Al Jazeera, because one of the video, one of the videos which you offered for us to watch for this class was um, for I think it was an example of ISIS propaganda, and I was um, I, I, it was a German channel uh, channel Vox. I don't know if you pay attention, but they use footage of Al Jazeera to uh, to uh, to give examples of ISIS on the ground. So I found it's very interesting. It's like layer on the layer on the layer. Mm -hmm. And how about how about other uh, great powers that maybe are not as great as Russia, right? Or but uh, 
How about the BBC? Well, uh, speaking, speaking of BBC, because I talk about this publicly funded uh, TV, so the example in Germany was taken from BBC. So it was kind of, it was supposed to become like BBC, this publicly funded uh, uh, information outlet, but it never became because it's nothing like the same. BBC, I mean, um, also in every hotel you can see BBC and BBC um, uh, very yes, good in... They also transmit, they broadcast uh, also in Spanish, I think. In different languages, yes. And I heard, for instance, in India they transmit in 20 different languages, so they do oh. hard job on uh, language politics uh, in order to reach. But, so, but do, you, do you think this is the the, the 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 British people who pay taxes? Why do, would they give the money for for TV shows in India? I don't understand this. Well, I I am not an expert on the finance. The Germans, I, I think they are so generous. You know, when when I watch YouTube. And I see that they offer us in Spanish, in English, not as much as Putin, right? But they, they also try to offer us news. I, I think, that's good. But I, I now, think the big I think question, the difficult question. I, I think um, since the information is a new form of capital, so okay. if we talk about source, information now is a source, like in post-industrial society, and information in itself produces a capital. And that's why, but I don't think this is the motivation of general people in Britain or in Germany to pay for different languages to be translated. There must be an answer which I don't have now for you. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, if you look at information as a source, like, you know, like like oil and so on, and this is now a source. And that's why um, we have overflow, overflow of information from different channels from all over the world in different languages. And so that becomes, the situation becomes very difficult for us because we have to cope in this situation of different flows of information. And we cannot 24 hours a day watch that and compare what say Russians, what say Ukrainians, what say Chinese, what say Americans and so on. So yes, Americans, for instance, how about the Americans? What are the Americans channels, you know, yeah. uh, outlets? Claudio. Yes, they have a CNN. We can mention also the French. They are uh, uh, Radio France International. Yeah. Uh, all of these are propaganda, that's for sure. You must spread idea, you must talk, we must uh, have an opinion about something in this world, and you, uh, you will make it with your uh, own, uh, um, I don't know, your own uh, TV ch channels. So, so, so you, you, you think that the UK, Germany, France, they 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 do propaganda as well yes of course because they they uh, there was uh, or they are the great power and they they like to to promote their uh, ideas uh, mm -hmm. uh, i don't know interest and so on that's what yes. but now recently you know after the armistice celebrations and so on and the criticism by Donald Trump that uh, France and Germany were not contributing to NATO sufficiently their fair share and they said that they they would like to do their own army right yes. or their own uh, defense initiative between France and Germany but I, I think because we are now talking about propaganda and uh, have, have you heard about Euronews? What is Euronews? Do you know Euronews, Tatiana? Yes, of course. Uh, it's a channel which uh, transmits the news from European Union, and I guess it is funded by e European Union. But I want to go back to what Claudia said about CNN, and it's very interesting. 
and it's very famous channel for American propaganda. But now, when it is not in line with the current present a president of uh, of the United States, it's very interesting. So they kind of transmit a propaganda, but not in line with the government uh, who is in charge at the moment. So it's very interesting. Yes, I I think the 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 U.S. are so powerful and so important that they have um like uh, propaganda media outlets for the democrats and propaganda media outlets for the republicans they yeah, have, I, so you see they party lines. one national one they have many different mm. but how about the power of those um, platforms such as um, google and youtube or facebook for instance that they have the power when you search for something you search for some video they have the power to decide who appears first yeah, yeah i mean we know that in first line they were commercially driven but now we also realize that they are um, they um, they they are very powerful in accumulating information and delivering the information and i think also google now uh, delivers you news there are news feeds from Google, which uh, was not the same before. So, um, and Facebook, you forgot to mention also Facebook. They uh, they are not so search, uh, search engines, but they definitely influence the information flows. And Twitter, yeah. they, they are all American, right? Yeah, I, I, I mean, they position maybe international, like international. Well, the, the, I think there is a Russian equivalent to Facebook or two. You, you have um, the contact and uh, or not class, Nikki. Yes. But Which, by the way, at the moment is banned in Ukraine. They are banned in Ukraine. What do you think about this ban of of of, uh, of those social media platforms in Ukraine? Well, you know, this is uh, we have different lines. We have um, uh, official line of the people uh, of the government uh, president who ban it, and they have their arguments why they ban, ban it. And we have people on the ground using or not using it. And we know that there are, for instance, a lot of bans in China on some channels. Also, I think Facebook included, but still people know how to use it. So there is, you know. Uh, so do you, do you know people in Ukraine who still use uh, the contacting? Well, let's ask our students if uh, I'm well, but I, maybe it will be a provocation question, you know? Yes, maybe when we ask in Chernivtsi and they say they don't use it. Uh, Valentina's group with uh, Bogdan. Can you please unmute your phone? But to, just to say it uh, simultaneously, uh, while we solve our technical problems, I, uh, I realized how recently Facebook won, before even Contacti was banned, the Facebook did very strong uh, um, 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 reclama, what you said, um, advertisement campaign, and it became more and more powerful, and it replaced, uh, so many people had two accounts or three accounts, but with this kind of political development which we have in our country, many people just drifted to Facebook. So it's just basically, you know... Um, well, was there some uh, social, social difference between the people who moved uh, first to Facebook? For instance, the young people... Young people who speak English, because initially I think it was English-speaking channels, so it was like Facebook is in English, Contact your Naklasniki in Russian. So there was this uh, language divide, but what you said about the smart language policies, which are in different um, situations we can observe, it happened also to Facebook. They started to translate. Yes. This is something, another expression I remember um, a colleague from Italy who is now in Germany. He mentioned the other day I met him, he said soft power. It's also like a, an, ex, uh, an expression for, for related to propaganda also, right? Yeah, it, of course, it is soft power. And that's why you mentioned before it's a hybrid wars. They are not combat on the ground. They are wars in information field, uh, you know. So, yes, of course, it's about soft power, soft influence. Yeah. 
I think that you mentioned that the Euro News, right? And you, you said that Euro News probably funded by the EU, right? I can uh, I can imagine that it's in the interest of European uh, Union. What 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 I I I found out something very strange, right? <laughs> when I try to <clears throat> Look at the funding of Euronews. It was not easy for me to find, yes, on the internet, who pays for Euronews. And initially, I think it was a consortium of national TV channels mm. in different European countries. But after the financial crisis, uh, they sold Euronews to the uh, business of the family of an Egyptian billionaire. Okay. So 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 53% of Euronews belongs to the to the uh, business of the family of an Egyptian billionaire. Did, did you know this or not? I, I think now I recall you mentioned something like that, but you point to very important question that the uh, not uh, not question but very important moment that we have to realize who owns which media outlets and when we get information from this media outlets we have to be aware what side they might present and different outlets present different sides so imagine that on euro news they they at the beginning of each uh, show they said this is uh, Funded 53% by this uh, Egyptian billionaire. <laughs> but you know, I... they are not so transparent as you are because you, you said it was difficult to find the fundings. And I don't think it's only in the case of Euronews, you cannot track the fundings. And um, because they don't want to be as transparent as you are at the beginning. So. You know, I was worried in the beginning because if I am a, a Europeanist, right? And I was worried that. Because of the crisis, the the Euro News channel that was um, funded by public te televisions in all the countries, by by also indirectly by the taxes of the people in different e e European countries, and and now it's like in the hands of a private family, right? It and and this is in in Egypt outside of Europe and we call it Euronews. Well, um, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to, uh, uh, related to this, what you said, I wanted to ask the question, are people like citizens of any country or any particular country ready to pay for objective public information, public channel, public information? And we see that they are not always ready to pay for that. And if they are not ready to pay for that, there is somebody else who pays for that. And when somebody else pays for that, we have to um, assume that this information, mm -hmm. either fake news or propaganda or uh, diplomatic relations. Mm -hmm. See, I think I understand. So people, <clears throat> I like this, uh, Tatiana, what you just mentioned, because it reminds me of... Um, it, it reminds me of uh, a documentary I saw about how um, nowadays people more and more use free goods. <coughs> if you have a telephone and you have a free operating system, Android, right? And uh, you go to the Google store and you download free games for you or for your child, right? Or you go on YouTube and you see free news on YouTube. Or you go on the internet and you see the newspapers for free. And you go to the web websites of the newspapers and you don't pay. And in this documentary, they say, when you, when you are offered um, some good for free, most probably, you, that is not the good. You are the good. You are the product. If you receive a product for free, 
the most probable is that the product is you yourself and they explain that when you receive a video game for free it doesn't mean that the video game programmers they work for free they need to make money from someone and they do not make money from selling the video games they they make money from selling your data of how you use the video game so the business is when it's a free product the product is you and i and i like that and um and i think i agree with you tanya i i you can unmute your phone i agree with you that uh, we receive all kind of free information free news from everywhere but we should be aware of this danger right that we should understand the strategic nature of this information that people offer information for some reason right maybe you can agree with that you say i receive a free video game and they sell my data but it is okay for me i prefer to sell my data than to pay for the video game right with information it must be something similar right well, with uh, speaking of video games, I heard that there are like, you know, especially these video games which are related to fighting and so on. So uh, some uh, some uh, military um, agencies use it as a recruitment tool. So, I mean, speaking of that, uh, of course, there is um, if something I totally agree with this idea, if something is for free, then you must be the product. And this is when we see now revelation about usage of uh, data, metadata from Facebook and so on. We had recent examples. Then, of course, uh, it is uh, it supports your thesis about this. You are the product. But, you know, we stuck only to the news. And I think that uh, propaganda is not only in the news. And Claudio ma mentioned before a movie. And I think this but different... In free, in free news, the viewers or the readers are also the product. Because I guess so, yeah, of course. With, with free news, you don't make money from readers or from viewers, but you make money from advertisers yeah. or from those who make fake news or propaganda news and they pay you more if you have more viewers so the viewers are your product if you are a youtube yeah. influencer you have a youtube channel or instagram or facebook or twitter what matters is the number of followers that you have yeah, but uh, I, that's of course the truth but i wanted to mention another dimension of this propaganda subject which i said that claudio mentioned about the movie because if we take think of hollywood or if we think of other great media industries mm -hmm. and we even go to the movie and pay for the ticket if we go to the movie and we become also we are also exposed to some ideologies as flows and it's as powerful as news, but also entertaining. Yes, talking about this, sometimes we think about leaders, we think about <coughs> the presidents, right? The prime ministers and so on, but they're also very important business leaders in the world, right? For instance, uh, now the richest man on earth, I think is his uh, uh, Jeff Bezos, right? is the owner of amazon and i think the owner of amazon bought the washington post i don't know if you knew that right he bought this newspaper the washington post for himself because he liked it right and for contributing to information of the world you know for so, so the leaders can be also like business leaders, right? Well, they buy influence, right? They don't buy uh, only for some countries such as Ukraine. The political leaders are also the business leaders. In that case, it's the same person. Unfortunately, yes. You, you think it's a bad thing? 
you think it's better to have separate leaders? Well, I think that those who have business interests in politics, they will tend to pursue their business interests in politics. And this is the danger. And this is a conflict of interest, I would say, softly so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. And now it's a very... We cannot discuss about Ukrainian politics now because they can accuse us of propaganda. Well, let, let's not start because it's endless. <laughs> yes, yes, it's something, it's something impossible. <laughs> but, um, so about this thing, Euronews, you know, I, I still think that this person, this uh, uh, Egyptian person may not be so serious for problem because I understood that he's Egyptian but he studied in a in in a German school mm. in Cairo and I, I and he's not Muslim he's Christian and he then he w went to university in German in Switzerland and he also owns a bank in Luxembourg mm. that operates in Luxembourg and in Germany right so he's a german right so so you did a very good background check yes but but on the other hand you know the headquarters of euronews are in lyon in france which is also you know you keep also some control of that i i just would like it to have more transparency, but I don't know if that is possible. Do you think it's possible to relation, yeah, have more transparency or, or it, I mean, when we talk about European things, because sometimes the EU has been accused of not being very transparent. Do, do you think it would be possible with Euronews to be a little bit more transparent or maybe it would be negative because maybe if you are to transparent it weakens you in the, this hybrid war in the world well of course uh, if you are transparent you are more uh, vulnerable uh, that's obvious but you know I, I i don't know it's a difficult question which needs much more consideration than few so than few seconds i have so i, I transparency is good but and we have to think what are those buts i think that's the problem with when, when when it's about war in the world right a global war are we talking about global war a uh, war already yes but we call it war as you said without boots on the ground yes it's war it's a hybrid war it's a strategic communications war right it's the information war that's definitely, yeah, or we can say we are living in the era of um, disinformation also, right? Because there is a lot of disinformation. That's going another on. word that is used very often, disinformation for propaganda. There are many, many different uh, words, right? And um, yes, I think it's good. We, I, I just added some new seminar questions. They are really interesting ones. One of them was about uh, who are most powerful in propaganda or in strategic communications, right? And I put some examples of the US, Russia, uh, ISIS, and, uh, and examples like those in the UK. And, <laughs> but um, I. I think uh, I also put today a new example about Catalonia. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about Catalonia, Tanya? I would like to know. Yes, I've heard. But public opinion about Catalonia outside, because I see it's a conflict that it's now a European conflict. It's like a, the former leaders of Catalonia are now in exile they say in in uh, in brussels sometimes they say the other people say no they are not in exile they are fugitives of justice right but then mm, 
there's in the European Union this uh, extradition agreement of the members of the EU, but he's in Brussels and Brass in Belgium does not send him to to Spain, right? And then he also went uh, to several conferences in Finland in other countries. And when he was coming back from Finland to Belgium, the Spanish Secret Service uh, caught him in Germany and informed the German police, and he was arrested in Germany, which the mod, this former leader of Catalonia. And they thought, wow, now he's going to be sent to Spain. There was not a worse country for him to be caught than Germany. But then the German courts did not send him to Spain, yes? So so I think this uh, European arrest uh, warrant thing, it, it works well. For instance, um, at some point, they mentioned some examples, some policemen, they said, if you uh, drive while you are drunk in, in, in Romania and then you come to Spain and there's this uh, mm. European arrest warrant and they will arrest you in Spain and send you to Romania because you, you drove when you were drunk and that it works for these kind of things. It does not work so much when it's about more politically sensitive things, right? Such as uh, one, one mm. leader, political leader that is accused of secession, right? Well, I just speak for information flows. There was a moment, and it was some time ago, then Catalonia was all over the news. There were young people protesting for their independence and so on. So it was very present in media uh, space. And recently we don't hear m much about this subject and it it shows us few dimensions. Are the back talks are going on and they try to solve it uh, or the, it is solved, but I don't think it is solved so fast. Uh, what is what happened in Catalonia? Well, I, well I, I think what may have happened is that the, the uh, those Catalan leaders who promoted this mm. uh, uh, campaigns, these propaganda campaigns abroad, they were the first, right? Mm. They, 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 when they, you strike first and you have a great impact because public opinion is not prepared mm. to, and they see that those images of Catalonia and the fight for freedom and yeah. the future of Europe and so on, and people, they watch this in the US, in Germany, and so on, mm -hmm. and it has a great impact. But I think at some point, the Spanish leaders, maybe even world leaders, European leaders, they, they stroke back. You know? <laughs> and they created their own campaigns, mm -hmm. and they availed some um, misinformation uh, issues in, in, in the previous campaigns, right? And they made their own campaigns and they also informed the, mm. the journalists that were sharing those mm. propaganda campaigns. They told them, be careful, you know, what, what you are sharing, you are not contrasting the information. Mm. And, they, and maybe what happens now is that this first effect of striking first, mm is not there anymore because mm. now like the defense when you say that uh, mm. russia is accused of propaganda in the beginning it can catch you off guard mm. but uh, you create your own counter propaganda but i also want to mention that i don't think it's in the interest of the european union to support this uh, separatist interest on the ground because European Union deals with national states and if they start to deal with this kind of um, like uh, Cata uh, um, in the case of Sp uh, Spain, uh, Catalonia or in the case of the UK with Scotland, uh, the, the, the function of European Union goes beyond uh, the function they want to stand to and that's why I think it's also like kind of the shield 
it's not part of our authority to decide what is happening with this uh, separatist movement, if you want to call them separatist or independent movement in the countries. And I, I think it also influences the uh, information flows which go outside of Catalonia. Mm -hmm. Now we have just uh, five minutes for the last questions by, by the audience, right? So Romulus, your opportunity. Please unmute your phone. You hear me now? Yes. Uh, I really I don't know what to question our guests. <laughs> I, I uh, heard a lot of things, but I want to tell you something. Uh, maybe you don't know, but uh, Kim Jong-un studied in Switzerland too. And uh, yeah. we know about... Uh, his politics in uh, his country and uh, so, but but what do you mean by this you mean that switzerland is like any other place to study and it's a good place and it doesn't matter if you are korean or if you are egyptian or if you are american yes i don't want to mention that but i uh, i find the similarity between uh, the egyptian billionaire and kim jong <laughs> Good. How about you, Gabriela? I don't have a question, no. You don't have a question. We always have questions for you, but you never have questions for us. <laughs> I think that is good. You are generous with us. How about Claudio? Oh, a lot of interesting. I don't have question, but I think that the propaganda uh, start in Germany and uh, Bolshevik uh, made uh, the best of it in this case. And now all over the world you will find the uh, propaganda. And who, who would you say uh, is more, more powerful? in propaganda is it the us russia china who germany who is the most powerful in propaganda now i think that uh, um germany is excluded uh, as uh, the tatiana mentioned because they they understand uh, the danger and after the war they uh, stopped the uh, the project of propaganda as uh, it is uh, well known in uh, other countries and i think this is the the but in terms that uh, uh, who is the most the american it was but best so this is my opinion mm -hmm. good we have another comment you, question from from uh, youtube last, uh, um, there are problems um, with your connection claudio but tanya we also have uh, another uh, watcher on on youtube who makes a comment and he says that Yes, propaganda exists everywhere. There are many different sources of propaganda. And he says that in order to find the truth, uh, maybe uh, what, what would be important is to um, access as many sources of information as possible. Well, I think this is a good suggestion to finish our discussion. He, he asks what your opinion about that, if that can help with the fighting propaganda. Yes, I think um, I, it's very uh, good suggestion and it's, um, it's imperative nowadays. As I said, when we live in different flows, we have to check source. But as I mentioned before, we cannot check 24 hours. So we have to be efficient in checking. Mm -hmm. also. Good. We have to close this uh, lecture and um, I thank you all very much for your participation today. Those who have been present on, on Hangouts Live, uh, 
uh, such as Claudio, Gabriela, Romulus, in the big uh, group in, in Chernetsi, Valentina's group. But many people are watching also on YouTube. There are now 10 simultaneous connections on YouTube, and there are people like Livia Michalake, Bianca Semenyuk, uh, Laura, Vasio Penchuk, Flavius, Many, many people also on YouTube. If you watch on YouTube and you like this video, please give thumbs up. If you don't like it, please give thumbs down and share it with your enemies. But you just share it, right? And uh, I thank you all for your, for your participation. Next week, we will have a really, really nice lecture at the same time at 11.30 Eastern European time on Monday we will have a lecture about social media, social media tips. So today we discussed a lot about um, TV uh, channels and other forms of propaganda, but now we will discuss about social media and we will try to um, give you some power tips in the case that you want to become propagandists uh, yourselves. And... Uh, until next week, I thank you all once again. And uh, please, those who are on Hangouts, when I close the, the broadcast, please uh, stay because I have something to tell to you in private. But uh, for all the rest, uh, see you next week. Bye-bye.